Hello and welcome to the show. Later on, we'll be taking a look at four rare bikes from years gone past. But first, I'm riding BMW's heavily updated S1000XR in Germany. Which is, of course, the last country in the world to have some of its highways without speed limits. So, it would be rude not to drop a couple of gears and accelerate from the South African speed limit up to the maximum of the S1000XR. With the screen in its highest position and the panniers hanging in the breeze. That was two days ago, and since then it's done nothing but rain, and rain a lot. But it looks like the sun sort of wants to poke its head out, so I'm going to take the opportunity to go for a ride and get a feel for what the new XR is like around some corners, of which there are a lot in Bavaria. Please don't rain! Please don't rain again! Although it's quite a tall bike, measures have been taken to combat that with a narrower seat across the frame directly behind the tank. And of course there's plenty of adjustment available, but no matter how much I fiddle, I can't seem to get on or off the XR without kicking the panniers. Maybe I'm an old fart who needs new hips, but even so, it's still a tall bike. Well, I say the sun's been poking its head out, um, it seems to have gone away again. But the main thing is that the roads are dry and I can get a little bit of a feel in some twisties for the XR. This is an important bike for BMW, since the XR has become, since its 2015 debut, something of a bumper sale success. Born of a desire to acquire some of the market captured, and to a certain extent created by Ducati's Multistrada, this model has given lots of ageing sport bike riders, like me, a model that can keep delivering superbike thrills without the associated aches and pains. This is the XR's first big update, and the engineers will have been conscious of the balancing act required to bring something new to the party without spoiling what was already a very accomplished sport tourer. I don't suppose it's too surprising to find out that it feels very, very much like the last one. The one thing you could always say about the XR, and you can definitely say about this one, is it's just so easy. The comfort is bang on. The only thing I have a bit of a quibble about is the seat. But I tell you what, you wouldn't want a bit of a fat bottom on this. If you're a bit wide around the hips, this thing is, uh, is going to grip you. The bucket seat is holding you in position, so if I want to try and slide over a bit, I get this horrible ridge. It's really uncomfortable. I'd have to say it's not an improvement. I'd... It's not a deal breaker either, but it, it's definitely... It's not the way forward as far as I'm concerned. So, comfort's on the money. But the decent sport riding position has been compromised somewhat, which isn't a great start. What about wind protection? That was always pretty good, so hopefully the smallish screen still does a useful job. It's got two positions uh, for the screen, and as you can see it's just flicked up and down really easily. For the high speed stuff you would knock it up a bit, uh, and it, it definitely offers more wind protection than I remember. With a comfy riding position, decent wind protection and some panniers, the touring brief is all but fulfilled. Or at least it will be if the previous model's Achilles heel has been sorted. It's on longer, more relaxed stretches of road that you really notice the revs, the irritating vibrations have disappeared. And uh, they've lengthened the top three gears, which helps it feel a little more relaxed. I think there's some extra cushioning around the handlebar area. 
huge improvement over the one area that really needed improving. BMW's full-blown superbike, the Double R, has been the recipient of new shift cam technology for its engine that gives it a belting top end without sacrificing mid-range. Although much in the XR's engine is new, there's no shift cam technology because, apparently, this bike doesn't need that manic top end rush on account of its slightly softer focus. Bragging rights, therefore, may be compromised, but don't for a second imagine that means the XR's performance has been compromised. Oh man, it needs such little effort, such a tiny increase on the throttle, and uh, all of a sudden you've gone from relaxed sport riding to mummy. <laughs> what a thing! You know, it's just, oh dear. Yeah, that'll get you in. That'll get you in a Bavarian jail, I think, quite quickly. The headline numbers of 165 horsepower and 114 newton meters of torque remain the same, but plenty of twiddling and changes have happened inside the engine, so it's the same but different. If those sorts of details interest you, then check out the specs on BMW's website. Otherwise, the only really noticeable external change, and it's a good one, has been to the exhaust. There's now a significantly smaller, better looking exhaust can at the expense of a large collector box, which is hidden away under the bike. So, top result, that one. The XR still feels properly fast at the top end, and just as flexible through the mid-range. So much so that it's easy to overlook the now even smoother auto blipper gear change. I tell you what, that's fifth gear. Loads and loads of lovely torque. Decent enough response. Fifth gear and it was down to 50 k's an hour. Lovely. A responsive motor and trick gearbox mean that needlessly playing with the gears is childish good fun. Well, I say that, I've just overtaken a truck and I couldn't be bothered to change gear. It's uh, fifth gear. Man, it helps living at sea level, that's for sure. And then we get to the electronics, which impact just about every element of riding the XR. Happily, though, you barely notice once you're familiar with them. There's semi-active suspension that's so good you don't realise it's weaving its magic. The electronically adjustable suspension adapts the ride quality and responsiveness depending on which of the four major modes you've selected, and they can be fine-tuned to the nth degree. Electronic assistance provides a safety net for everything from braking to traction and even hill starts. There's a never-ending list of adjustment that I simply don't have time to explore in my short time with the bike. Time that has been made even shorter by the dodgy weather. All I can say is that it all seems to work. It definitely makes a difference swapping between the modes and yes, I did take advantage of the rain setting when I got caught in a Bavarian monsoon on unfamiliar roads. But I also loved, when I had the chance, the super responsiveness of Dynamic Pro whenever the sun threatened to make an appearance. It makes the XR feel like a genuine superbike, and that's remarkable when you consider the touring chops that this bike's also got. This is a serious update then of a bike that sort of feels like it isn't a serious update. It comes across more as a heavy duty polish, if you like. Everything has been improved, whether that's engine or handling, the electronics package, even comfort. It all feels that bit more refined. And that's not a bad thing when you remember exactly how good the previous model was. Perhaps the greatest achievement of this new model is the eradication of the vibes that plagued it before. It was a genuinely irritating aspect of what was a pretty damn near perfect bike. So you could say now with the extra refinement, this is, well, if not the complete, the perfect all-round motorcycling tool, it's pretty damn close. 
Now, if the eradication of the vibes is enough for you to upgrade from the older model, then so be it. Congratulations. If, however, you're coming to this whole XR thing for the first time as a new buyer, a potential new buyer, then I have to say I heartily recommend it. There aren't many bikes, if any, on the market at the moment that combine sports and touring in such a capable package. Thank <laughs> you.